Hello and welcome to Clammy Games Recommends, the series where I recommend games which I have really enjoyed personally and I believe are worth checking out. In this video, I recommend Elwa's Awakening, a side-scrolling 8-bit metroidvania developed by Elden Pixels and released on Steam in February 2017. For disclosure, I received this game for free. You play as Zoe, a heroine summoned from another world to the land of Elwa, which is currently under the tyrannical rule of Vicar an evil mage who has subjugated and enslaved the people of Elwa. Zoe then sets off to defeat the four protectors, each having laid claim to an ornament of Elwa, and once these ornaments are gathered, she can then use them to confront Vicar in the final showdown. The standout feature here has to be the art style, and this game is a retro throwback in every sense of the word. Big fan of the pixel art here, and the environments, characters, and enemies in the game are all superbly done. The art here does remind me of that in Shovel Knight, which of course is a natural link to make given that these two games both pay tribute to the games of the past. Levels or screens here are grouped into locations such as the Ember Cecilium, the Shrine of the Sea Monk, Central Elwa, or the Forsaken Valley, and I really love how each felt different, especially due to the colour palette used in each area. This game features over 400 unique rooms and I do appreciate the volume and the variety of each scenario. The levels themselves are also constructed in such a way that you are able to unlock shortcuts for easier backtracking through switches on the ground, which, once activated, permanently unlocks moving platforms for you to use. As a result, the world felt really well made and really cohesive. If you got lost, the map which you acquire early on in the game will certainly help. Furthermore, there are various secrets to discover mainly through the presence of false walls, which allow you to access seemingly blocked off areas. As for the gameplay itself, the controls here are fairly simple, with movement and jumping forming the majority of your actions. Controls and jumping here feel great, which is especially critical in a retro style platformer. Early on, Zoe gains a staff which you can use to attack enemies, and the interesting part about this staff is that you can acquire various magical gems to slot into it which forms the metroidvania style progression. For example, the green gem allows you to conjure up a block which you can use to activate switches, form temporary platforms on a bit of spikes, and even to extend the range of your jumps through jumping off a higher position. The blue gem allows you to summon a bubble which allows you to reach places that are vertically higher which then allows you to access new areas that you have encountered in the past. What I really like about this progression is that the game first shows you these tools in the environment such as having stray blocks lying about or bubbles that form over bodies of water before giving you the ability to conjure up your own. This meant that when you got the ability, you instinctively knew how to use it and can think of previous locations where this ability would come in handy. Combat would probably be the weaker point of the game as you are mostly limited to melee attacks. While the enemy design is nice, their AI is simple and several enemies function in an identical way, with the main difference being in their outward appearance and that enemies encountered later in the game simply have more health. The boss fights here are fun, making use of the newly obtained gemstone in their respective dungeon. As a side note, these fights are actually linked to the in-game collectible of blue orbs. According to the in-game text, Collecting more orbs weakens the bosses, which adds meaning to the collectible and encourages you to explore. This also ties into the map function, as rooms belonging to an area are highlighted in red when you scroll through it, and for each area, the map actually tells you the number of orbs that you have collected out of the maximum number that can be found, which allows for easier tracking down of these if you are aiming for 100% completion. Also of note is the fantastic soundtrack which accompanies you as you traverse throughout the land of Elwa. The tunes here are well suited for each area and is one aspect which I really enjoyed. Overall, I found Elwa's Awakening to be an excellent retro throwback due to the combination of art, music and gameplay. If you are looking for a retro style metroidvania in 2017, I would definitely recommend this game. Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.